We've been to Apple, we've been to Vodafone, it's time to unbox some iPhones. Welcome to our iPhone 11 unboxing. I'm David, this is Lewis. Um, we've got the newest iPhones. I've got the iPhone 11, we got that from Vodafone. Lewis has got the iPhone 11 Pro, which we've got direct from Apple. I think we should get straight in on the iPhone 11. Yeah. Um, this is the slightly less exciting of the two, but still yeah. pretty exciting. Um, I, we've got the scissors. I don't think we're going to need the no. scissors because um, we have the classic tab. Tear off tab. Oh, that is so nice. You said you weren't going to get excited and you're getting excited with the plastic. I can't help it. I can't help it. Right. Okay, we've got um, the black one. Uh, we've actually got two of the uh, the black ones, which is a bit of a shame because the iPhone 11 comes in six different colours, oh, and yeah. some of them are totally different to the colours you got with the iPhone 10R last year. So there's a new purple, there's a new green one. Uh, the red one is different; it's a bit pinkier. Yeah, the yellow one is lighter. Shade. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm we, quite we glad about the yellow change because I wasn't a fan of the yellow uh, 10R. I you didn't like the yellow? No, it was the, I think it was the one colour option I wasn't a huge fan of. But hey, there we go. What was, your, what was your favourite colour? I think I would go with the red. I like the red. It's just very, it was very in your face and just, hello. But it's also for good causes. Oh yeah. Uh, right, here we go. Ooh. Is that already on? I think oh no, it's just a bit of text on the screen. Oh, that's neat, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so they've put their, uh, their legal gubbins on the plastic. Isn't that the address of Apple Park? Apple Inc, one Apple Park way, yeah. Cupertino, yes. There you go. Peel that off. Oh, you like this as well, don't you? This is, yeah, this is my favorite part about unboxing any phone is peeling off the screen protector. You know, some people keep these on and just never take them off. Yeah, and they'll like start dogging at the edges and they'll just leave it on. Like, they start what? Dogging? <laughs> <laughs> you know when, like, you know when they, 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 they start coming off of the court? Do you know what? Let's just move past that. I think that's something different. <laughs> right, uh, let's have a look in the back. So these are the, um, the new, we've got twin lens, dual yeah. lens, dual lens cameras. Uh, we have had dual lens cameras before, um, but this is in a different uh, layout, in a sort of square pattern, which seems a bit weird to me. Mm. It's almost like they're trying to make it the same design as the Pro. Yeah. We'll, we'll see the Pro in a minute. That has three lenses. So there's a space almost for the Pro triple lens there. I don't know if I really like the way this is set up. No, I think for a dual uh, camera setup, I do prefer like the iPhone um, XS design. Have you got that there? Yeah, there we go. There you go. So it's just vertical. It's a bit simpler. This time it is a uh, wide angle and an ultra wide lens, so yes. there's no telephoto. Ditch the telephoto. So there's not going to be an optical zoom in. Uh, well, we'll get, we'll get into this stuff um, later on. Let's have a look what else is in the box first. So yes. I'll just put that there. We've got, oh, there's some interesting stuff there. So this is the um, stickers, um, the legal stuff. paraphernalia, the <laughs> spike for, the spike. that's not the technical word, is it? Definitely the, not. Um, what do you Sim call it? Tray removal? Sim tray removal tool. Yeah. Where did that come from? I think that's right. Here's the more interesting stuff. You get quite clever, that isn't it? The way they've packaged that, it <laughs> looks like it's a pair of AirPods. But it's but not it's a not. pair of AirPods. It's a pair of EarPods because they've got wires. But you can buy some AirPods, that's I fine. I think they're lightning. Yeah, they are lightning um, connected, right? Because there is no headphone jack, just making sure. They yeah. are. <laughs> Thank you, Lewis. <laughs> Good point. Uh, now, this is a bone of contention. This is, I should probably just check, this is a 5 watt. Yeah, um, that's a standard on the words. Pretty. Five watt power. Power brick. It, it depends brick. on where you are, uh, what it's called. So yeah, just go power brick plug. Whereas, oh, just made a complete mess of that. Whereas the again, I don't want to steal your thunder, Lewis. But yeah. the, the pro comes with the. It's fine. Is it twelve or eighteen? Eighteen watt. Eighteen watt. So that has a fast charge. This is only five watts, so it won't fast yeah. charge. Even well, though it's fast charge capable. I was about to say yeah, it's fast charge capable. It just doesn't come in the box, which is. Yeah. yeah, so you have to spend a bit of extra money on that. It is what it is. That's everything that's in the box. Um, shall I start setting this up now? Do you want to start opening that? Uh, let's have a look at this one first okay. before we start setting stuff up. So let's get out here. We have the Midnight Green. This is probably my favourite colour option of the bunch. Uh, I wish they'd done a blue one though. Yeah, yeah, Midnight Blue would have been beautiful. I mean, green is a bit of a, an odd colour choice, um, but hey, let's crack it open and have a look, see what it actually looks like. Here we go again. Oh. It slightly oh. worries me how much you enjoy it. <laughs> it's just so satisfying. And here we go, right, layer this one. This is a maximum storage model, 512. Oh, is it? Oh, look at that, yep, 512 gig of storage. Apple always give you the um, 
I mean, not you, us. They always give us the highest storage version. Thanks. This is the 64 gig version of the iPhone 11. Yeah. That's all. I mean, to be fair, I think 64 gig is still more than enough for the majority of consumers. It's only kind of hardcore users that need the extra. Ooh, look at that. I've got to say, it's not very green. No, I was expecting something a bit more in your face, but uh, based on, I mean, even looking at the, the box, it's slightly, yeah. slightly more muted than the box. But still, you can definitely tell it's green, which is always good. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think the, the most noticeable change on the back is obviously the triple lens uh, configuration. So in addition to the ultra wide and the wide angle, you've got that telephoto lens that was on the uh, iPhone 10, iPhone 11, uh, iPhone 10 S, and that range there. And the 7 Plus as well. Oh yeah, of course, yeah, I completely forgot about that. I was asking them about that because I thought it was really weird that they've dropped the telephoto and had the ultra wide instead, like this one has Two, and I was thinking the two most important you'd think would be the telephoto yeah. and the and the wide. But you were saying that the ultra wide is more current somehow. Yeah, I feel like it's more, more artistic people, as well. Yeah, right? I feel like people are kind of leaning more towards the ultra wide kind of thing. Um, I quite, I, I mean, me personally, I quite like the curvature that you get from wide angle um, cameras, especially when you're kind of taking pictures of tall buildings and that kind of thing. But obviously, each to their own. And with this, you don't need to, you don't need to choose. You've got all three, which is. Nice and if you can afford point. the yeah, if you can afford the initial price of it. Written. Sorry, I've just I've noticed now that this is a really interesting finish on the back because it's not, it's still obviously it's still glass, but you've got this really nice matte effect. But there's got there's a bit of depth to it. Can you kind of see what I mean? Yeah, so, there? It, so it's glass. Yeah. So it, it looks kind of like it's uh, milled al aluminium. Yeah. But it's not. It's glass, and it's the Apple are really keen to tell me this is the toughest glass of any smartphone currently in use. Right. <clears throat> and I said, well, has it got a Gorilla Glass? It is Gorilla Glass, okay. but, it's, but it's supposed to be a bespoke glass made by Corning, who do Gorilla Glass. Well. So good. how long that will remain the toughest glass out Just there? Presumably, <laughs> presumably Corning, oh, I don't know, they wouldn't be free to use the same glass. No, but, but something make... similar, I imagine. Yeah. Right, also very waterproof. Yes, yeah, so it's the same kind of, what is it, IP? 78? IP68. 68, sorry, yeah. Which is kind of the maximum. You won't really see consumer products any higher. No, than that. yeah. But crucially, it's still more water resistant than the iPhone 11, isn't it? Yes. So you've got uh, four meters of water resistance on this model, whereas it's two on the iPhone 11, and I think one on the iPhone 10R. Yes. So, uh, Very good. yeah, you've got, a, you've got a nice little upgrade there for people that use their phone underwater. So. Well, it's just, it's harder to bust it, isn't it? Yeah. Because yeah. if you spent all that money, you, you drop it. You get it wet, you're probably yeah. going to be okay. And you know, I say that, but I, I always have this flashback to the time I dropped my phone in a swimming pool and it was not waterproof and that was the end of it. All uh, right, before we go any further, I just want to peel off this because this is, yeah, as I said, my favourite thing. And these little nubbins on the side in there, I think. But anyway. That's... They're unnecessary, aren't they? You've got the bottom one, that's all you need. Nubbin. Oh, look at that. I just like the sound that goes along with it. You oh, get amazing good. static on that, put your hand near that. It's not working anymore. <laughs> There's something wrong with me. When I did it, it was stuck to my. They're just hand. supercharged. Yeah, I guess so. Should we charge? These? Should we uh, set these up now? Yes. We can talk a bit more about what they do. Yes, let's do that. Okay, uh, so we've set up the iPhones now, looking all snazzy. But before we go any further, I do want to show you the power brick because I completely forgot to do that earlier. So here we have a chunkier brick. Here I think we the have. phrase is chunkier. It's a chunk and a half. I'll tell you that right now. I mean, have you got the plug? Handy. Yes. Okay. So there's yeah. That, there is an obvious difference there, but in terms of thickness. Um, but if you know if it charges your iPhone up quicker, I have no complaints there. There you go. You can take that puny. I like they've got right the. There. Remember they did that first oh, on the, the Apple Watch. On the Apple Watch. Yeah. Uh, the click. Do you, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. This is yeah. This is a great little mechanism to have, especially if you're travelling, because yeah. it's always annoying having the prongs out, and they always scratch stuff in my bag. And it means you don't step on it as well. And that, which it's is always nice. the most painful experience known to man. <laughs> so yeah, we've got the uh, 18 watt power brick there. And as you'll notice as well, that it's USB-C and not USB 2.0, um, like the other charger is, because that enables the faster charging. But it's also quite annoying because unless you have a USB-C port on your computer, you will have to buy another cable. An adapter. An adap or an adapter. Mm. Everybody loves an adapter. Mm. Right, so yeah, that's out there. Just thought I'd show you that. And then just to confirm, we've got the same headphones and the same cable in the box as well. So is that lightning to USB? -C? Lightning to USB C, yeah. yeah. Cool. And not AirPods, AirPods. Yes, yeah, yeah, no. I mean I'm waiting for the day when Apple includes AirPods in the box, but I don't think it's gonna be anytime soon. There is an argument to be made that a lot of this stuff, if they're not gonna give you the 
top level one, they could just not bother putting in at all. Because like the five watt brick, yeah. everybody has about six of those at yeah. home. They're just creating landfill plastic. And the same with the ear pods. Air pods are nothing for me. Yeah, I think I'll go with you on that. Old anyway. statement. <laughs> so let's talk about, what's, let's, go with the, let's go with the A11 first. Let's talk about that. All right, so um, screen wise, it's the same as the uh, 10R. It's okay. 6.1 inches. It's liquid retina, yep. which so it's like still not, not quite as good as the OLED. Yeah, the screen is um, bigger than the 11 Pro, yes. which is 5.8. Yes. But smaller than the Pro Max, Six, which is 6.5 inches. 6.5. The camera is the main upgrade from the uh, 10R. As we already said, it's got the two lenses. Going to the selfie mode, that's 12 megapixels. And now that, yeah, so that really should give us the full range. There you go, that's more like it. So that's the normal, and then this is a sort of zoom out. So that is an optical zoom, that mm. is glassware. Um, so you shouldn't get any deterioration in image quality. No. Whereas if you actually zoom in, that's obviously a digital zoom and it will deteriorate a little bit. So I might as well just show you a bit of the, the sexy iPhone 11 cameras. So you've got that same ultra wide, and then you've got the standard wide, and now you've also got the telephoto to get that extra level of zoom. And right. That's where you get. Okay, the, that's weird. The extra so image. So when it's using the telephoto, so, it yeah. does that. Thank you. There's also night mode, and both of these have night mode. Uh, and this is an automatic feature, so this might be a little bit difficult. Oh, if you just put your hand over the um, the sensor. All right. Oh, Do you there see we there? Go. Yeah. A little yellow um, warning sign pops up, and it gives you an estimate of how long you're going to need to do an exposure for. So in this case, it's the maximum three. Is that the maximum? It's not quite the maximum. If um, if it detects it's on a tripod, mm -hmm. it can do even longer. It can do up to I think thirty seconds, something like that, because okay. it knows you'll be able to keep it super still. Yeah. It does that by gyro, so it can tell this is super still, so you're probably on a tripod. We're holding still. Yeah, see, do you see what I did there? Yeah. So you, you only have to press it once, you don't hold it down. Yeah, because holding it down is the new, a new feature of the iPhone 11, the 11 Pro, isn't it? Because yes. instead of holding the shutter to take a burst of images, which has been the case for pretty much every iPhone since I can remember, Apple's ditched that functionality in the iPhone 11 range, and now when you hold the shutter button in a photo mode, it changes into a video mode, which is yeah. kind of similar to kind of things like Snapchat and Instagram. Um, they have a very similar functionality and, you know, it makes sense when it's kind of adopt a similar attitude. That's quick take. So what you can do when you're doing quick take is so you, you hold down, it's now switched to a video and it's now recording. Mm -hmm. If I swap to the right, you see that little padlock? Oh, yeah. Then it's now permanently in nice. video mode, so I don't have to hold it down anymore. And you press back, but then it goes back to the normal mode. What's also interesting to note, I've just noticed it on your screen there, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the camera, but if, if you tap this button at the top, the arrow, I'm not, see, I'm not sure if this is an iOS 13 thing or an iPhone 11 thing, I'll have to go and check to make sure, but you can actually now change the uh, size of the image without leaving the camera app. So you've got the standard 4.3, you can go into 16 by 9 if you want that kind of edge-to-edge -edge display, uh, or you've got a square mode, which is, you know, square. So you previously have had to do... You had to do all this in the in settings, settings menu, yeah. So it's nice that you can finally, after so many years, do this within the app. So thank you very much, Apple. Let's have a look. We've got slow-mo selfies. Slow fees. I'm, right. I'm not going to call that <laughs> slow-mo selfies. Um, <laughs> let's see. you got to move. All right, so I'll do that. <laughs> That's charming. Look. That was extremely charming. This is another new thing. Um, it's got auto... Auto play. So when you when you're going through your videos mm -hmm. and your photos, and you just move on to it, and it will just start. Oh, okay. Doing it like that. Oh, it's muted. That's interesting. So it's like um, it's a little bit like on like Facebook when you scroll past and it does an auto play video. But without any audio. I think this now has audio. Yeah. Pretty cool. There you go. Your first slow fee. That's my first slow fee. <laughs> Made you say it. <laughs> <laughs> So another uh, enhancement on the iPhone 11 range, I should say that because it's across both of them, is the notch because Face ID has been upgraded. Uh, Apple says that it should um, respond to kind of more awkward angles than before. But that's not really something I've ever had much of an issue with. But then again, I don't know if that's because I've trained myself to always look directly at the iPhone when I want to unlock it. I mean, what's your experience with Face ID? Good? Bad? It's not been great lately because um, I've been growing a beard um, very unsuccessfully. And it's combined, so it still recognises me even though I didn't have a beard when I um, 
recorded yeah, you know, yeah. when I set it up, first of all. But it just makes it a bit more difficult. So if there's like slightly bad lighting, it used to be able to cope with that, but now it's like slightly bad lighting and a rubbish beard. <laughs> it, it does seem to have con confusion with that. Obviously, I've just now set this up with my face as it now is. I mean, it's so already it's not... unlocking it when, when you're kind of only glancing it, it so has... it seems pretty quick. It is doing some... Yeah. yeah, that was quite a difficult angle. So it seems to be quicker, it seems to be a bit more... Um, just on mine. A bit less reluctant, you know. No, it didn't work. I'm, I'm, I'm being too optimistic and just basically holding it flat. But obviously it's not going to be able to see my face like that. So you have to be looking at it still. There you go. I mean, it's quick. The, uh, the unlock process in general is a lot quicker, which is always nice. Uh, so let's talk about the internals of both the phones. Yes, uh, which are we do know. pretty much the same. So they both got the A13 um, Bionic chip. Bionic because it's sort of tying in with like a neural network thing. Um, and it's the same sort of principle that they've had for the last few. They had the A11. I think it was the A11 Fusion, or was it the A10 Fusion some time ago, but it's been Bionic ever since then, same code name. The A13 is really fast, and one of the advantages of that is for uh, photography, because you have got you had Smart HDR last year, which mm -hmm. is a system where it would sort of use machine learning sort of principles to analyse what made a good photo, and it would look in the different parts of the photo and check the lighting and the exposure, and it would sort of adjust them in different ways. Okay. So if you had um, you know shadows and, and bright lighting in the same... Um, frame, which would normally be really, really hard for a camera to cope with, and it would sort of do a clever way around that. So now we've got second gen Smart HDR, which we haven't had, obviously we've just opened them, we haven't had a chance to test out yet, um, but should be pretty good. The photos that they showed off at the um, uh, the announcement yeah. um, earlier in September and at the um, briefing I went to yesterday looked really good. It was really impressive. Um, but that's pretty much the same, that sort yeah. of smart HDR side of things is yeah. the same between both phones. I think, yeah, in terms of spec, I, uh, in terms of like the core internal spec, I don't think there is much of a difference between the 11 and the 11 Pro. It's, and po it's possible there'll be more RAM, but, yeah, but, but they never announced that. Exactly, so that's not something we can really speculate on. I mean, I imagine, yeah, there's going to be a little bit more RAM in here, but in terms of performance, I don't, I mean, there's no, there's not going to be a noticeable difference in performance between any of the iPhone 11 range. They're all going to have more than enough juice to keep you going for quite some time, I imagine. Which is why for a lot of people, I think we're going to be recommending the 11. Mm. It's a really interesting decision that they've called it the Pro, because the sort of tradition with the MacBook Pro and the iPad Pro has always been normal people don't buy Pro products. No. It's like you get it if you're a, a digital illustrator like a or something like that. Creative or... And the idea of this just being a consumer product, that it's just something that a normal person would buy, is a bit, I don't know, it almost puts them off. Mm, and it, cost, it costs so much anyway that yeah. maybe they shouldn't buy it. But, but that's something we'll have to look at yeah, as um, we use the phones a little bit more. Absolutely. We're gonna, so we're going to start um, testing them out. So we're going to do reviews. We're going to do lots more articles about them, which you'll find on the Tech Advisor and on Macworld as well. Um, but for now, I think we will say goodbye. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>